So this video we're looking at the transformer, um, not the robot, the giant robots, but the electrical transformer. Um, and the electrical transformer is a really simple um, kind of idea. Well, it actually builds on some fairly complex ideas, but you basically have an, an iron core. This is a, um, an iron uh, kind of loop. It's, it's relatively square. I'm not going to try and draw it in 3D. Um, but that's what it is, and you have um, a coil of wire on one side coming around and around and then coming out and um, you have uh, some sort of um, usually an alternating current um, going through there or an alternating voltage across it um, and then you have a, and we call this the primary, so uh, the primary side, the primary coil, and um, I guess the uh, better to build this up from the concept. When you have a coil with a current running through it, um, if that current's instantaneous running through that way, it's going to change direction, being alternating. Um, but then you have a current running through it. A magnetic field is induced in the coil. Okay, and um, the uh, magnetic field lines are concentrated by the iron core and you wouldn't have quite this sort of distance of separation but um, the coils sometimes even on top of each other but you'd have another coil over here um, I haven't drawn that one quite so well but and that coil um, will then have the magnetic field going through the wire which induces a, a current uh, in, in this one and um, you can say have a lamp or a resistor or some sort of a load on there, some, something that's say, and it's basically a means of transferring energy, electrical energy, without any actual electrical connection. So there's no um, uh, electrical connection between the two coils. Um, the coils of wire on the iron core can be insulated, but it's the magnetic field that very clearly is um, is produced. The magnetic field lines pass through the iron induce um, a voltage and therefore a current in the um, secondary, so this is the secondary coil it's pretty easy, a primary, secondary, the first one is the primary one, the secondary one is the one where it's induced um, and that's, that's basically how it works, you don't have to have the iron core but it will work better uh, it will be more efficient and we'll talk about efficiency shortly but so it's basic instruction um, how, how it functions um, I guess we've already talked about that, it's transferring energy through the magnetic field between the two. Um, but there are different uses for them uh, in terms of their function. You can have um, a transformer that steps up the voltage, so whatever your primary voltage here is, you can make your secondary voltage here um, higher if you want. So you can have your voltage increase, you can have your voltage decrease, so your secondary voltage would be lower than your primary. Or you can have what's called an isolating transformer where the voltage is exactly the same but you just get this electrical isolation between the two bits so there's no, um, th there's no actual current flow between there. And that can be useful for um, particularly on building sites and things where um, as soon as it's cut off here you're not going to get any electricity flowing. Um, whereas if you cut here you're connected to mains it's very easy to earth and do, problem, uh, do cause problems and things. But, um, now, uh, how, how do you step it up, how do you step it down, and how do you isolate? Um, that all revolves around the number of coils. So there's a number of coils in the primary and a number of coils in the secondary. And um, this is, you can probably work this out, I'm going to keep it relatively brief. But if your um, if you're primary uh, to secondary, if your secondary is uh, smaller, number of coils smaller number than your primary that's a step down the voltage so we're talking about stepping the voltage down if your primary is uh, is greater wait a minute how do we do that I've, I've done this back to front your, your secondary is is greater in that one so it's a step up um, and in this one your secondary is lower so that's a step down and you probably know what I'm going to say already here, if your primary is equal to the number of secondary coils, that's an isolating transformer. Isolating. 
Okay. Um, yeah. There's a nice little equation which relates to um, the next point that we we're going to cover to, to deal with this. That is that the voltage across the secondary, which is the one you're most interested in calculating, over the voltage in the primary equals the number of calls over the secondary over the number of calls in the primary. So that's one of our important formulas. Um, just very simple formula, ratios of, are the same, um, and that makes sense. Um, and then you've got another formula, we've got to use another colour. This is for the efficiency of the, um, of the transformer. So efficiency, and the efficiency of the transformer is the, um, it's a percentage, it's the um, output energy, so the energy going out from the secondary side, divided by the input energy, and then because it's a percentage, times it by 100 over 1, um, and that's, that's quite a handy formula as well. Um, you can look at power um, if you'd like, and because um, that's also because uh, if you're considering time, your output power over your input power is going to be a measure of the efficiency too, um, because your power output and input will have the same um, time period which they're operating over, so that gives you the energy anyway. Power and energy are proportional in this case. That's another way of saying it. So let's give you the um, what we'll do for the power. It would be the voltage in the primary times the um, this is uh, times the um, this is the input power input power voltage in the primary times the current in the power uh, primary and um, for your output this is just uh, simple simple equations from a couple of years ago but your output is going to be voltage in the secondary times current in the secondary and this is where you get an ideal, what we would call an ideal transformer, where you have 100% efficiency and the power input is equal to the power output. Okay, so, um, yeah, those are some very important equations. Now, um, I want to get into just two extra, two things more. One is the um, use of these in power transmission, um, but I'll, before we do that, we'd better very quickly look at um, how... Um, they're, uh, how they're made. So um, it's this is very similar. They they usually have two coils. Here's the symbol, by the way, for a transformer. The coils are usually quite close together. Sometimes they're on top of each other. So you could have a winding here and a winding here, and that's going to be the most efficient way to to share those magnetic field lines. Um, and you can stick your iron core in there as well. If you have an iron core in the symbol, they'll draw a line or two, usually like that. Um, and that's that's your electrical symbol for a, in a circuit for a transformer, but in the real the real world they're not usually um, that efficient. Okay, there's a lot of heat loss um, in the energy transfer because remember whenever you get a current flowing, um, you end up with heat, and that's energy loss, and it's lost to the environment. It's not destroyed. Remember conservation of energy you can't destroy energy. Um, so what they often do is they use these giant fins on the side of, um, of you've probably seen heat sinks before, but on the side of transformers that you'll see on power poles and on the side of the road, um, these giant fins. And in those fins, there's often oil as well, and they pump, they pump a whole lot of oil uh, through the coils and the windings to take that heat away from them. Um, otherwise, it'll blow up too much heat and it'll, it'll explode. So the more current's being drawn, the more heat you're going to produce. So the more the transformer's being used, the, the more heat loss you get and the more cooling you require. So you need a whole lot of oil pumped through them and going into these fins, and the fins radiate the heat to the environment. Um, and that's how they keep cool. You can sometimes hear them humming away. That's another form of energy loss as well. Um, I'm not exactly sure why that is vibrations due to um, little magnetic interactions perhaps but um, it's the same reason you can hear the humming of the power lines um, they often are sizzling as well if you if it rains and you get little voltage um, uh, uh, spikes escaping or something like that but anyway so transmission of power this is really cool I think um, you usually start with um, a uh, your your power generator might be a hydroelectric dam, but 
this is where your generation occurs. Um, so it could be a hydro dam. Just say, for example, or wind power, nuclear power plant, not in New Zealand, but uh, somewhere. And then um, that's usually at a very, very high voltage. I couldn't state for sure what it is, but um, it's transmitted um, from there to your local substations. If you've seen a substation, you can see all these giant pylons and um, these these wires everywhere and big infrastructure uh, poles and things. It's really exciting. But they transform at a very high voltage, and then it's a little bit lower, but it's still very high voltage in the order of thousands of, um, of, of volts at this point. Um, and then there's sometimes even more local substations, but they'll usually transfer them to outside your house. You have those uh, transformers, um, not outside every house, but they're um, they're they're uh, usually there's a couple on every street, and they're, they're often green. Um, and you'll see them, and they'll say on them uh, high voltage, keep off, or something like that. Um, and then they go off to your house. And so they start off at very high voltage, and the voltage gets progressively lower. Um, and it's an alternating current. It's going back and forward um, at each stage of these. And they'll have transformers at each stage. So they have a transformer here, and then they've got the transformer here at each stage to, to bring the voltage down. So usually you bring the voltage down, bring the voltage down, um, and in your house... You, most of your appliances, electrical appliances, operate on about 5 volts DC. Okay, DC is not AC that's produced um, and AC that's transmitted. Um, but uh, the, the DC is just easier for modern um, electronics to work with and uh, silicon chips and all of that. Um, and, uh, well, TVs and things are a little bit more, but in any case, um, it's DC, so you need to convert it from AC to DC using a rectifying circuit and um, it's a very low voltage so you're going to step down that voltage quite a bit at the plug at your wall. Um, now different appliances operate at different voltages that's why you have um, many different power adapters to work out of the socket. Um, question then is if we use DC so much why is it, um, why is it alternating current in the power transmission? And um, the answer is, really simply, it's all about that efficiency. Okay, so it's all about efficiency. Um, it turns out that the higher the current, there's, there's two things here, the high, why the high voltage and why the AC, and they're both about efficiency. If you have a high current, you get a lot of heat loss. Remember from up here we're looking at high current and a lot of heat loss. Um, and heat loss is definitely a loss of energy, and so that's less... Um, energy that's getting to the house that can be sold and used properly and all of that. Um, less global warming if you're burning hydrocarbons to um, produce the energy. Um, and it's transmitted at, um, so did I say a yeah, high voltage means low current, um, and it's transmitted AC also because um, you, you can't transmit high voltage particularly effectively by DC. Alternating current seems to be the best way to do that. And the rapid shifting back and forth of alternating current at about 40 hertz New Zealand. Um, that's just seems to work out nicely, easy to work with. Um, and yeah, um, so that's pretty much it. This video's gone on way too long. We'll leave it there.